Hey team, welcome back to the gear room. The underground gear room to be precise, which is no longer underground. So this Sir Badger 18, the first version, has a little bit of a history for me. So when I moved to North Carolina, so this is around 2013 maybe, um, I had just come back from Baja and in Baja, my friend had let me borrow this or actually given me this book called The Guitar Amp Handbook by Dave Hunter. And in that book, Dave Hunter showcased an amp called a Mojave Coyote. And he made the claim that it was sort of like, you know, the very best modern version of a vintage non-master volume amp. And at that time, you know, we were playing in our band. And I think then, I'm trying to remember what I was playing. I think I was playing my Mesa Boogie um, Mark I, the original Mesa Boogie. I'm pretty positive that's what I was using. And, you know, I loved it. It was really loud. But for some reason, you know, probably like a lot of guitarists, I had this fascination with vintage gear. And, you know, that's a 100-watt amp, or maybe it was an 80-watt amp or something. And I was looking for more like you know, a 20 watt amp, something I could crank up. I was really obsessed with getting power tube or output tube overdrive rather than um, preamp tube overdrive. Anyhow, that book convinced me I should get a Mojave Coyote and I called Victor Mason and we talked a lot and he made me one and I promised my wife it would be the last amp I ever owned in my life and I would give it to our kids one day. And then we moved to North Carolina. It arrived where we were there plugged it in and played it for like three minutes and called him up and I was like, dude, this is actually the opposite of what you told me it was. It's incredibly loud. It's not a bedroom amp, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, and I said, so you, you promised me if I didn't like it, you would give me a full money back guarantee, which if you know anything about Victor Mason, I hate to say it, um, but no, he did not give me any money back guarantee. And the more I talked to other people who had done business with him, and researched him on the internet, I realized he was an extremely dishonest businessman who would do or say anything to make a profit. So, moving on. I was I was gigging a lot then, and I was playing in North Carolina, gigging a lot, playing with this musician who hired me to just sort of be his guitarist and doing other gigs, and so I wanted an amp for small gigs. I went to Sound Pure Music in, um, oh gosh, you know, the west, eastern part of North Carolina. And Eddie Berman said, if you want an amp for life, the Sir Badger is that amp. And so I ended up getting the Sir Badger. And actually, I just got this matching cabinet a few months ago and years and years later because it was brand new, unopened cabinet. And um, it was, they were selling it brand new, really cheap at a gear house in outside of Dallas because I guess it's nobody really wants them anymore. Anyway, so I got the matching set. And over the years, I had put in a bunch of different tubes, like new old stock tubes. And when I took it to gig it here, and it just didn't sound good to me at all anymore. So I ended up calling Eurotubes in Portland and got a brand new set of uh, complement of tubes for it, all JJs. Put them all in, and I pl played it and said, no, it sounds good now. But then I went on a quest to get a pedal for it. And I've been trying all these pedals, and none of them really, it's, it's, so this amp, I'll play it in a, se a second. It sounds like a little bit on the verge of fizzy, and you could see, whoops, oh, how I've, sorry, my cable's getting caught. You can see how I've got it, the controls. So if you read the manual, um, what the manual says is you should never set those two controls, power and drive, uh, very far from each other. So like, you know, if power is at four, then drive should be at four, maybe five, maybe three, but you shouldn't set them really far from each other. And that's how I had always set it. And then down on the end, there's got there's the gain. So it's got this power scaling. Um, but I was looking at the manual, I guess for the first time ever, and it actually had a setting kind of like what you see here, doing exactly the opposite of what they say you should do. So I tried that setting, 
and it actually sounds really kind of chimey and very Marshall-esque. I bought this amp specifically because I was looking for a Marshall, and when I went into the shop to try it, there was a guy sitting in there who said, dude, when I was playing it, he said, man, that's more Marshall than a Marshall. That sounds like a really old vintage Marshall. But apparently, it's not really exactly meant to be a clone of a Marshall. And it's kind of Marshall and boxy. Anyhow, for me, I guess the problem I find with it is maybe it sounds kind of fizzy. Uh, I'll play it for you in a second. But before I do that, I'll talk about the quest. So the quest was to find a pedal that worked with it. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting caught up with my cable. I've got too much crap on the floor of my room. Sorry. I, I should have probably made everything nice and neat before I made this video, but I didn't. So here's, just since we're over here now, here's the pedal board I have been using with my, um, Here's the pedal board I have been using with my um, Bluto Tone DK30, uh, the Davy Knoll signature model. Without, without that, that wasn't on there. This was on there, that buffer, because um, Josh, who makes this black box, said that that buffer would be good in front of it. So otherwise, you see there's a King of Tone, there's a Clon. And there's um, a vibe machine, and you know you, I've got the wah wah, and I was kind of going for like Hendrix E sort of sound. That Benson delay, by the way, is absolutely unbelievable. And that JHS, I got it for seventy five dollars on Black Friday, the reverb, and it, it's fine for you know it does what it does. And since we're over here, just real quick, here's the <clears throat> sorry, here's my main pedal board. I use this pedal board for my Bluto Drive High Plate Skyline, which is a 100 watt amp. And underneath, if I were to open the lid, you would also see um, a Big Muff and an Octron, uh, like Hendrix and Gilmore. So the pedals I've tried out so far to see if they work um, with the <clears throat> Sir Badger 18, the Boxer Rock, which, you know, is a Marshall in a box or a JTM 45 or something in a box. It sounds pretty good with it, but gets pretty fizzy. That Benson Germanium boost sounded really good with it. What I thought sounded the best with it, actually and honestly, is the, um, <clears throat> the Overdriver, the Vic Audio Overdriver, um, which is like, a, it's a really simple circuit, but I guess it's the circuit of like the... Uh, the original tone bender. Um, so that sound the best so far. The fuzz face or the sun face with the volume down sounds pretty good with it. Haven't tried that uh, morning glory yet, but pedals I thought were going to sound with it, good with it, like the Timmy, that didn't really sound good with it. The, um, the Java Boost, the Keeley Java Boost, which is a treble booster, sounded okay, but not fantastic. Um, and, you know, sound is subjective, so the Klon, as you'll hear probably in a minute, has a certain sound with it. Um, and then the the King of Tone and the Black, Snouse Black Box, they sounded okay, but not great. The best to me was the Overdriver. But um, just this morning, I put on this Unit 67, which I, the Dry Belt, which I've hardly ever played before, and it seems to sound great. So I'm going to just set this camera down, and I'm going to play just so you can hear the tones. And let's see. Sorry, I know. It's just a terrible thing. Okay. Let's so um, here's, the, here's the bass tone. No, no pedals on so that's I'm playing out of a Nash S63 Strat with Wilder pickups straight into the amp. 
when we saw the settings on the amp. Now let's try some pedals. I'm not going to try the unit 76 yet. I'm going to go backwards. So first I'm going to play the clone. Here's the clone. No clone. Without the clone? With the clone. Doesn't sound bad. With the king of tone. Without the king of tone. With the king of tone. Without. side on the queen, king of tone. So both this is just a drive side. Okay, now let's try the black box. So here's the Bass sound. Let's go through all of the boxes real quick. Clean. Clon. King of Tone. Both. By both, I mean both channels on the King of Tone. So, uh, actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go dirty, both, and then just the boost on the King of Tone. So that third one was just the boost. Just clean. And that was just with the boost on the King of Tone. Now I'm going to go through all those really quickly and then I'm going to hit the unit 76 so you can compare. So, clean. Here we go, unit 67. Unit 
Thanks for playing our game. 